What's up guys? So in my last video, I brought to you the easiest way to catch rockfish. So in today's video, I'm gonna bring you the easiest way to catch fish in the surf right behind me. So if you're, maybe you're in a long skunk streak and you need your confidence back, or maybe you're just starting fishing, you know, during this quarantine, I feel like a lot of people are, are starting fishing because it's one of the activities that's allowed in here in the Bay Area. If either of those applies to you, this is the technique for you. So first I'm gonna go through your options as what tackle to use, and then I'll put my gear up in the top corner up here. So, starting from the base, you can use any kind of reel possible. I mean, anywhere from like a 2,000 to 4,000 reel will work out here in the surf. Um, I have 30 pound braid here. Anywhere from 10 to 30 pound mono braid, it doesn't really matter. Uh, main line, then once you get to your terminal tackle, you have a slider here with a bead and then anywhere from like a half ounce to you can go as heavy as you want five ounces if you really want to and then a swivel there um, to stop the bead and the, the sinker from going all the way down to the hook and these two are tied with um, I believe this is a palomar knot on the braid and then a clinch knot on the floral I believe that's what it's called and then finally, we got about a three foot leader, anywhere from, again, 10 to 30 pound leader is fine. Um, and at the bottom, a little J hook right there. And I'd say anywhere from like size four to like, you could even go as big as like a three aught or a four aught, especially if you want to target some striped bass. Today, we're mainly going for perch. There might be some striper out here too, but uh, and because we're going mainly for perch, I got a little bit smaller hook. I think this is a size one. So, once you get all this terminal tackle set up, the last thing's last, you just need a little piece of bait. And you can use all kinds of different kind of baits, but my favorite is this guy right here, the sand crab. Why do I like this? Because it's cheap, and it's what these fish are normally eating. They're coming in close into the surf here to try and find these out of the sand. So we might as well match the hatch directly and tie one of these on here. So a lot of people have asked my previous videos how I tie these onto the hooks. And to be honest, I don't think that part really matters, but just for those who have asked, that's how I hook it on. I don't know if you can see it there. Just one time through the, the shell, just like that, from the bottom up to the top. See, that helps a little bit. So anyway, let's toss this in and see if there's any fish out there. All right, let's toss her in. No need to get super deep. These fish are pretty close to shore, so. I mean, anywhere from like 10 yards to 30 yards. Plenty of distance. And the beauty of these pyramid sinkers is they hold the bottom really well, so. Once you get it in there, as long as the current and the swell isn't too big, that sinker should hold bottom relatively well, enough to give you, you know, plenty of time in the, in the strike zone catch some fish oh wow okay well <laughs> look at that the fact that I was able to catch that fish wow check this out guys the fact that I'm able to hook that fish with this weight or with this hook Pretty impressive. Look at the hook size compared to that little perch. That is like one of the smallest perch I've caught in a long time. Anyways, one hook them, get this one back. You could keep this theoretically, but personally, I'd say let go anything under like eight or nine inches. I don't know, in my opinion, there's just not enough meat for it to be worth it. All right, peace little bro. All right, let's try that again. See if there's any bigger ones in there. All right, tip number one. So if there's ever a lot of seaweed in an area like I've been countering here, it's best to just either one, move down to the beach or two, just move to a totally different beach because when the, when the seaweed is thick like this, fishing is like damn near impossible. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna head to a different spot. We're just gonna walk down the beach a little wise and see if we can find a clear area. Spot number two. I'm 
overrun it. Oh yeah, fish on. <laughs> Look at that. Well. Well, again, not a giant, but we are upgrading slightly, so we're trending in the right direction. And there's fish number two. Another little barred surf perch. One of the several different kinds of surf perch we have on the California coast. I think this one's the most common, this one along with the red tail. But especially in Southern California and Central California, this is the main one that you'll find on sandy beaches just like the one we're at here. So we'll get this one back. Again, these are really good eating, but these ones, I don't know, some people keep them and eat them, but honestly, myself, I don't like to keep them unless they're like maybe nine inches or above, somewhere in that range. Unless I was really desperate, but not today. Try another spot. Spot number three. Bite. There we go. There's another little guy. Out there, past the seaweed. And what I was saying before is when the seaweed is here, it's kind of tough to fish and Honestly, I'm still in a little bit of a seaweed little spunk here, but mixed in with the seaweed, there happens to be a few of these little surf perch, just like that one right there. So these fish right here, super abundant on the California coastline. And like I said, these barred, these are the most common. So if you're a beginning fisherman and you just want to get out here on the surf, this is most likely the fish you're going to catch. And uh, that's the little guy. They get to, my biggest is about 18 inches, so they get, you know, a heck of a lot bigger than this one. But, that's a future 18 incher right there. We'll get him back. Oh yeah, there's one. Slightly bigger. Now once again, not a giant, but just look at the colors on that. Golden bars with like almost a purplish shine on the top there. Cool looking fish. challenge here. I'm going to do a five minute challenge. I'm not going to make any cuts. I might fast forward some through some boring parts, but no cuts. I'm going to see how many surf perch I can catch or striped bass. You never know. There could be one out here. I'm going to see how many I can catch in a five minute span. So let's put five minutes on the clock. Start this challenge in three, two, one. Blast off. Get it. Oh, there we go. Got him. Okay, there's fish number one. But it doesn't count unless we land him. So we got to give him up on the sand here. Come on. Let's crank him in. Playing for speed here. Oh, yeah. Ski him in. Water ski him in. All right. Really quick. There's fish number one. Let's get him back. Okay. Got to get another bait. Luckily, I caught a few sand crabs before this to prepare. Let's get them on there. Okay, let's get back in. Okay. All right. Come and get it. Come and get it. The 
bait, small bait. Oh, missed him. Another bite. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I think I might have taken my bait. Dang, dang, dang. We're wasting time here. Come on. Come on. Oh, wait. I got one on here. Okay. Count it. All right. Fish number two. Didn't even know he was on because he's so small, but still counts. Little buddy, thank you for playing. Oop, not the best release, but a better one. There we go. Okay, so we got part of my bait. Oh, let's get another stand crab. All right, guys. Well, that was a total fail. Caught two fairly quickly on the, I think the first two casts, and then I had a third one on, came off, and then nothing else after that. So two in five minutes is not very good, but. Let me know if you guys like this challenge or you want to see me do it again. Leave a comment below how many you think I can get in five minutes. Give me a benchmark and I'll see if I can come out and do it. All right, well, thanks for watching. This video kind of was for all of you guys who maybe are new to surf fishing and maybe just joined this channel. Hopefully this answered a few questions. This is always the technique that I tell people to use if they're just getting into surf fishing, they're just starting. You know, take a rod. If you have something that's even close to resembling a surf rod, use it. Use this technique, throw a sand crab on and you might catch your first fish. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for watching. I know this channel has been growing pretty well in the last couple weeks, so for all of you who have newly subscribed, welcome to the channel. And if you want to see some of the more epic catches that you can get out here in the surf, I'll leave a playlist down below. But until the next video, hope you guys are staying safe, and we'll see you next time.